On a simple level, if you if you think your mind doesn't concentrate, just as simply, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't want to spend too long here this evening, our mind is linked to our five, five sensory organs: our sight, our hearing, our taste, smell, sense of touch. They're called Gnanindriya, that's what Hazrat Singh was talking about, some of those, when he was saying Dhamma uh, Karma, uh, to refrain, so that's like hold those back. So it's with our eyes that we might see wrong things, or look out for wrong things, we might slap it with our tongue, we might listen to Jubaniya, with our, you know, with the sense of touch. With those five sensory organs, we look out for dodgy, or we do dodgy things, let's say. To help with your concentration, is if you try and use all of those five when you're doing uh, simran. So let's say if you're doing Wahiru simran, uh, obviously you have to simply, if you want to get your concentration back, you're going to pull your mind back, if you recite it out loud so you can hear with these ears, I call these the outside ears, so you say it loud like we're talking, Wahiguru. You sense of Kinesthetic wise, so that's the sense of touch, you don't really touch, how will you touch it? So I always say, well, maybe spell it with your fingers, so you're not with a pen because otherwise you'll be going through loads of paper. Basically where you sat, on the table or on the bed or wherever you sat on the floor, just start writing as you're saying it, Wahiguru, just write it. And as you're writing it, you'll be seeing those letters, not in English, in Gurmukhi. Use your eyes to look up what you're writing. So you've got auditory, you're saying it, kinesthetic, you're writing it, uh, visual, you're looking at it. In terms of our taste, your tongue, obviously we're saying we're reciting it with our tongue, with our sort of smell, uh, sense of smell. It's very difficult obviously to smell what you're writing because it's not a medium that you can smell. So maybe you put some incense in the room so you're not necessarily attracted by any of the smells that are around, or you might have seen a jod in the Dervad side. The jod is lit uh, with desi pyo, uh, pure butter, ghee as they call it in English, if you like here. So if you go, the Saints used to do a kind of parts in the jungles, and they used to take city with grand side, they used to light one of those and it would purify the atmosphere. So imagine in our houses, we haven't lived there forever, who knows who lived before us in those rooms that we're going to do bark and simran. If you like one of those, it's not, the key thing is we don't worship that. Because you might see elders putting their hand over it, putting it over. we're not worshipping that, we're using that practically. Uh, so that would help with the sense of smell, that your smell won't go in anywhere else because you'll have a purified atmosphere and then you'll be able to focus. So just what I'm saying is, to finish it off, is to bring in all five of those sensory organs and use them to focus. And if you do that, you know, if you try it five minutes before you go to sleep, you know, I don't make it hard, I won't say wake up early in the morning, I'll say just five minutes when you go to sleep. If you do Wahiguru like that, every night, five minutes, six minutes, let's say six minutes, and do that for a week, every night, six minutes, and do track all of those five senses in, uh, you will start concentrating, you will start seeing it. And when you shut your eyes, because you've practiced writing that on the table, on the floor, on your pillow, when you shut your eyes and try to concentrate, you'll see that written across your eyes, that Shabda Wahiguru. And some people will say, well, you shouldn't be looking at anything. But we're trying to find, realize God who's formless, that we call that nirgun, and to, to attain that formless God, you've got to go through his sarvan form, his form, which we can see with our senses, and that form is the shabbat, that's why Guru is in Gurbani form, it's through the Guru that we can go to formless, and that's just Gurbani. So if you see Wahi Guru across your eyes, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that, it'll help, definitely help you concentrate. You uh, many people have tried that just to get their concentration going and then you'll be able to develop it from there. Okay, just adding quickly to that. The two best times to do simran is either in the morning, that one of the law before British society wakes up, yeah, whatever time you want to call that, and then the second time is at night. Because there's less distraction in the world, there's less people moving around and you can actually concentrate better. It's easier just to do it those two times. Now, in terms of that, you have to do with Shadda, you have to do with faith. So you can't monotonously just keep saying Vahi Guru, Vahi Guru, and think, I want to do 500 now, I might click up, and that's it. You have to do with Brahm. If you do with Brahm, do with Shadda, with Bhagavan, then you get the follow like that as well. 
But the main thing is what basic Christ says, and we said earlier today, you have to hear the word that you meditate on, that's the main thing. But then if you sit in a tranquil place, sit somewhere where you might have some ambience or whatever you want to create, to have your mood or whatever it may be, to make that similar occur. But you need to say that loud and you need to start going. Yeah? And it will be hard and you will get distracted, but you need to just work at it and keep going at it. It's so like you start something new, it's hard to do it. The other part of that is 93% of our concentration comes out of our eyes. Why do you think the TV is so successful? Why do you think these mobile phones are so successful? It's our eyes looking at it all the time. 83% of our concentration comes through our eyes. 14% comes through our ears. There's only 3% which is left, which is for your mind. And that's the question. 3% for your mind. Now that 3% we think that's the worst thing, but if you could shut your eyes, put your fingers in your ears so you can't hear anything, till you know you'll start doing something in two minutes. Because you're not looking at anything, you can't hear anything else. Well, you can hear someone. And it's easy, just put headphones on, anything, put the similar on, put some recording. It's not that hard. But the main thing is, you need to do it sitting down. Yeah, you need to prioritise that time to make time for it, to make quality time, not to say, oh, I'll do it on the way to work. And then you say, well, the only then you look at every person on the train, whatever's going on. So you need to prioritise it in that way as well. Uh, I just want to say, this is me personally, that don't beat yourself up about this too much because this genesis is going to go there. It's not going to be easy for us to control our mind. It's not easy. If you think that I'll be able to sit there, obviously, like Bice has mentioned, a lot of techniques we can use, you know, and they will help us along. But don't think that, you know, I'll start doing similar and be maybe. Half a bit of garlic on a yogi, within a week, you know, I'll start getting some rust from it, or it'll take a month. It might take longer. Our job is to do similar. Simple. Don't think too much about it. You have to do If your mind's in it, it's okay. Just keep doing similar. Because who's going to actually mold that, that mind of yours? It's going to be the same. Uh, we can use techniques, like I said, very helpful, try those. But in the end, what's going to win that mind over is going to be that body that you keep repeating. Just keep doing that. Don't you know, sort of concentrate too much on your mind. Just look around you where we live. It's an impossible task, right? But with mind and it will come through.